Okay. The name on my birth certificate is uh, Deborah K. Mora. I was actually born in, in the mountains of Colorado, um, near Gunnison, Colorado, and um, I was raised on the western slope. Uh, like my husband Juan, I didn't live too far from his hometown, um, Montrose. Um, I lived uh, about an hour away in Grand Junction, and that's where I went to school and graduated. And uh, I can testify to what he talked about is the prejudice, and it was the prejudice of the extreme exclusion. And that's uh, 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 pretty much what I experienced uh, in, as an older child, um, but as a younger child, my parents were able to send me to parochial school. I was the youngest of eight, um, and my mother lost her first uh, child in infancy, um, but I uh, had uh, three brothers and three sisters. And they always pushed education. My mother only went to the third grade. My father went as far as the ninth grade. And uh, he was very fortunate um, after working in um, the timber company uh, with um, my grandfather and, and uncles. Uh, he was able to get a job on the railroad. And, and that gave him some stability. And uh, the railroad is what placed us on the western slope. And that's, uh, by the time, um, my, me being the youngest, uh, by, that, by the time I was growing up, my older siblings, who were quite a bit older than me, were on their own. And um, I was able to, um, to you know, go to a good school. And they were able to pay some tuition for that. And so education was always a big deal. I didn't always listen to that, but it was always a big deal. So, um, by the time I was in middle school and high school, um, there was um, an innate feeling that we just weren't, we didn't belong. And, um, I remember as a child, I always, I, I would go swimming every day, and I loved to swim, and, and, um, but I remember standing outside the swimming pool with my hands in the chain link fence, watching all the other kids uh, who belonged to the dolphins and I knew I could never go there or be there and that's that innate feeling nobody ever said that to me no adult ever said don't go there it was just something I knew and so that that's that prejudice of exclusion that you feel all the time is that you just know better you just don't go there and that's sad and that existed in the schools um, and the, the example that are what I experienced personally with a lot of my friends was that um, we became a cluster because um, that was the uh, if you didn't belong to the larger population of school you you just hung out with uh, the people who that you looked like and uh, shared cultural um, uh, traditions with so we were never a, a, a large population in, in Grand Junction so it was easy for um, us to be disenfranchised, if you will, and um, so uh, our, we, we took on a, a sort of a tough veneer, and I, um, I remember trying to act pretty tough myself, smoking a cigarette, standing there, you know, <laughs> uh, because the the feeling was is that they didn't care about us, what we didn't care about, so. Um, uh, and, and, but but we had you know um, a lot of fun together, and we did go to school. Maybe we weren't high achievers, but we would show up. But we would also ditch school. We'd also walk out of class. And you know, you can't tell me the teachers didn't see us across the street, just sitting out on the lawn. Uh, we used to hang out at this bowling alley, and um, not once did anybody call me. Not once did a teacher come out and say, what are you kids doing? Come on, let's, let's have a meeting. Let's, what's going on? You know, uh, what can we do to pull you in? Nobody in those days stood up and said, this is a shame. This is a national shame that our Chicano kids uh, aren't being educated and no one cares. In fact, I've never heard of the word Chicano. It wasn't until after I graduated that I started to hear some idea uh, that um, 
there was one, there was some marches, uh, and again uh, the name Ray Otero comes up, and uh, he was back from Nam, and um, if, if you didn't know him, you knew of him, and I knew of him, <laughs> and uh, he was starting to organize, and his sister-in-law or former sister-in-law, who was one of my dearest friends, called me and said, have you heard what Ray's doing? He's, he's, they're marching in the streets and they're saying, George Washington isn't our father. And we laughed. We thought, what? Well, what's that about? And um, I even remember thinking, well, how embarrassing. Why is he doing that? That's how brainwashed we were. We weren't part of anything. We were excluded, but at the same time, we really didn't know better. We bought, you know, hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> uh, and we didn't know how to articulate or to question. Or, uh, we were not analytical. We just accepted that that's the way it was. Even my parents, who were, um, you know, uh, went to church every Sunday and tied every Sunday, and my dad became a knight of Columbus, we would speak in a different tone when it came to certain things. And, that's, and so, um, and, and so, so we just accepted it as a reality, which is sad, but that's the truth. Um, I've told this story too many times that my mother, when uh, we, because we moved into a little bit better neighborhood by the time I was six years old, not great, but better. <laughs> um, we we had our when our neighbors would come over to visit her, if they knocked on the door, my mother would grab her dishcloth and cover the food. We were ashamed of our food, and I never forgot that. Uh, so we were felt to 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 be ashamed. So uh, um, it was it was all about okay, getting through to graduation. Uh, fine and well. My folks would talk to me about going to college, and I, I would listen and say, yeah, someday. Uh, it, it was far in the future for me, uh, but um, I, um, my three brothers did go to uh, college, and they, um, two of them received a master's degree, and, uh, but I was the only, uh, the other one just got a BS degree, but uh, I was the only daughter that finally went to school, but it was not because I had this innate desire from early stages to, to, to do that. It was really because of the Chicano movement that uh, really put me in that direction. Um, but um, there was not a lot, by the time there was organizing in Denver, and uh, the, the first the Chicano youth uh, conference was taking place, that did not trickle down to us. We didn't hear of that, um, most of us anyway, uh, in, in our hometown. Um, but we did, by the time I was a senior, it was, uh, I was starting to get um, brochures to go to college and, you know, uh, scholarship opportunities. And I realized now that that was that, you know, that first push into the universities. And the universities were trying to, you know, um, catch up, if you will. They were all about parity and, and uh, bringing up the uh, minority uh, enrollment because of the, the civil rights movement had al was already had already made tremendous changes. Um, so life was changing. The economy was changing. Um, you know, and. and uh, for a short time after school, um, I, I did try to go to school, try college, and I, it was a terrible uh, failure. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was a culture shock. No one was very friendly. Uh, none of my friends were there, <laughs> you know, um, and uh, I, I lasted about a semester and a half, and I just quit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my dad died when I was 12. so. Even though I had all these siblings, um, I, I basically grew up um, uh, with a, uh, in a single parent household. And um, um, 
it, my mother not being educated was always employed. She uh, was employed as a domestic. She worked in people's homes and she would often cook and, and, uh, um, and even worked to the point where she could, uh, she was the background person in a, you know, she could, she would provide all the food and do all the serving at private dinner parties, that sort of thing. She got her driver's license, God bless her. <laughs> and she was, she was uh, one heck of a homemaker. It was nothing to her to, to go to the farms and make sure we, you know, um, that we have plenty of vegetables and fruits. And, and uh, she was a real homemaker. She, she could sew. And, so um, I had a pretty, I had a, you know, um, she made us all very comfortable. But she didn't know how to be assertive. I became my own spokesperson in school. I even signed my own report cards. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just did what I had to do. You know? um, and um, uh, it, it uh, uh, being in school, um, uh, I, I did uh, meet a few new people, but not uh, out, outside of school. It was all about still about the party, and uh, I was fortunate enough to meet my husband <laughs> um, at uh, you know being out with friends, and uh, it didn't take too long before we realized that uh, uh, we had better get serious about life, and and uh, he was already going to uh, go to Boulder. Uh, so uh, we married about nine months after we met, and um, by God we went to Boulder, and he is the one that politicized me. Having come back from Vietnam, he already knew, um, he was already a, um, a, a hippie, if you will, <laughs> um, and um, uh, he was anti-war. We, we were, don't rock the boat people, remember? You don't go there, you don't make trouble, you, know, you don't bring it home. Um, well, it, it, we had to uh, move through all of that. Uh, but it didn't take long once we got to Boulder. Um, we realized that, uh, you know, we were ready to, to join the, the movement, and we did. And it was only a matter of time before. Uh, well, Juan was always a leader. He was in high school. He was in college at Mesa. Uh, Mesa State, and then um, it wasn't long before he became a leader on the campus. Um, and there were some other significant leaders as well that had moved up to the ranks. And, uh, um, for um, myself, uh, personally, I was, um, I was there. I was a face on those picket lines. I was there in those marches. We were, I was there at all of those cultural events and those organizing meetings. And I was there, but I was not a leader. Um, I was still, still growing, still going to school, you know, just trying to put it all into perspective. And, um, but very passionate, very passionate. Um, I didn't see myself as a leader, uh, but it, I, looking back, I was developing, I was watching, I was observing, we all were. And uh, it wasn't, in, uh, it, after we left Boulder um, <clears throat> and experienced everything that we did, I'd, I'd like to clarify that um, when we went when we went to Mexico, that was a plan to go to Mexico. It wasn't like, oh, um, I got this, I filled out this application, and I, I'm, I'm one of the ones that's going to Mexico. I remember sitting in student housing, our living room, with David Martinez and my husband Juan, uh, uh, saying, "Why don't we? Why?" Why don't I apply and we can go to Mexico for a few months? Because we had just experienced TB1 and it gave us time to reflect and just get away and make a plan to go to Pueblo. Uh, Mexico was very good for us. Um, um, and we did come back and we did fulfill those, those, uh, those plans. Uh, and uh, I had family in Pueblo. It wasn't hard for me at all at that time. Uh, I, uh, I took Juan to the state fair, <laughs> um, uh, and um, we ate in the restaurants, and we went to the nightclubs, and it became very clear that this was a different kind of community. Uh, there were a lot of Chicago people here. We never saw that in the towns that we were growing up. Never. Never. 
and uh, to, to be so free to express their music and, and, and to uh, to go to a high school where you know maybe 30 percent of the population uh, you know was Chicano whatever and um, so it was a lot of fun and, and we, we uh, wasn't hard to to get into the, the stream of things so um, settling in here uh, was was not difficult to start to find a house and, and to just get into the, the groove of the community. Um, I had uh, when we moved here and when we came back from Mexico, I was pregnant with my second child. And before the, um, in that was in 1975, and before Christmas, um, I gave birth to. Yeah, my first daughter is Catalina, and um, um, <laughs> and then before um, the following Christmas <laughs> in November, I gave birth to her another little girl. So I have uh, very close pregnancies, and they were babies, babies, <coughs> not not first grader and a toddler and an infant. They were all under the age of you know, yeah, actually four, excuse me. But um, I went back to school. I still had to finish my uh, college degree. So I did that with, um, uh, and uh, about that time, La Cucaracha was being started. And if, uh, meetings were held in my home, and the first couple publications uh, that were uh, published, uh, the work was done in my home. Um, but I never really felt like I was a journalist. I didn't want to be a journalist. Again, I was, I was still um, very, uh, very passionate about things. Uh, I, I, um, uh, I was a mother and a student. That was my job. That was, those were my job. Um, but it was happening all around us. Um, well, after I, I after I graduated, I did do a stint in the in in the office, if you will. My career goals and my interests were going more towards archival, library science, history, um, but there was a lot of opportunities there. There, was, there were no programs, there were no scholarships, so it was kind of like just find your way. People just assumed that I would be a teacher, and never would I, did I want to be a classroom teacher. I was looking at research and writing, or, or again, archiving, some, doing something like that. Um, it wasn't time for me yet, and I was still trying to find my place in, in, in all of that. Um, and uh, all of the years of the of the, of the cucaracha, um, I, uh, I I observed so many things. I can't say that I didn't learn. Um, a lot of organizing still took place. There were so many issues that were being um, written about and organize um, that um, there was always something to do, uh, even if I wasn't at the typeset or if I wasn't in, in the, you know, uh, at the light tables doing something. Uh, there were fundraisers. There were, um, you know, things that we could also do to, to help support. Um, again, I was um, um, really feeling like I had to find my own place. Uh, and after the Cucaracha um, closed, our last newspaper, we didn't realize it was the last newspaper. People were starting to go to Denver. Um, they had to for, you know, the, again, the war on poverty programs, were, you know, they were drying up. And, uh, the, and I, I'd like to say that what we received funds from the Catholic Church and we received grants but we were true to our mission and our principles. Uh, too many people who received funds and got their jobs, um, they, they, uh, they kind of got lost in that system. Uh, but we, we really did put our lives on, you know, uh, made, make us a, a huge, we made a huge financial sacrifice. But it got to the point where uh, when one of us was involved in a, in a serious car accident, there were no benefits. There was uh, some of the last monies went to the wife of, of, um, uh, of a very dear friend of ours who was you know, nearly lost his life. 
And that was the last straw. We don't talk about that a whole lot, but that was a financial reality. And people were already beginning to feel the, the, the weight of the poverty uh, because our kids were starting to grow up. And kids need shoes, and they need dental, and they need, you know, um, uh, all, all, of, all of that child needs and wants. And so it became um, um, dire at some points. I remember going to the store with uh, 20 bucks for the week <laughs> and um, making it work because we had some commodities and some vegetables in the backyard. But the, the week that I got that $20, we were in San Luis working on the land rights issue. And there were, uh, and we had our own community. Maybe we were all poor, but we all had kids, and, and it was it was exciting, and there was organizing, and it was, we were uh, just uh, fervent supporters and believers in La Casa, whatever the issue was, whether you know, uh, you know, the farm workers, the land rights. We experienced so much through those years, even before La Cucaracha. We traveled a lot, Juan and I. We had that ability and the freedom of students to, to just go to California, go to Texas, go to Arizona. And then, um, uh, so that's what um, the Chicano movement was for us. It was our education. We had all the textbook, we, 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 we did all of that. But it was really lessons in character building and discipline, um, doing what you say you're going to do, following you through. And, and sacrifice, and uh, <clears throat> and so it, it really developed us. So that that developed me because uh, when we realized that we did have to get jobs, um, there was an organization in town called Hope a Lot, and um, they were professional organizers that would identify issues and, and organize in the community. Well, an offshoot of that, there. Um, was um, um, an, another organizing uh, organization, and it was called United Seniors of Colorado. And I heard about this. Well, you know, I said, why don't you apply? You know, I had a lot of, like I said, uh, experience on, uh, as as an observer and as a participant in a lot of that. But this gave me an opportunity to to be a paid organizer. And and um, okay, senior issues. What's that about? Uh, well, tort reform. Um, you know, um, uh, senior. Li uh, you know, uh, nursing homes, uh, <coughs> legislative issues, corporate rate hikes. Everything that affects low-income people definitely has the same impact on on the uh, senior population. And then there were coalitions to build. There were political issues that. Uh, to, to bring forward. So I finally uh, in, uh, you know, got first-hand experience of, you know, organizing door-to-door. -door. I went to the unions, I went to the retired um, uh, uh, associations, I spoke to them uh, and identified their leadership, built that support, and I was taking people to um, um, the Capitol for hearings. I was taking them to conferences in Greyhound buses. And, we, and, and they showed up for the pickets, uh, you know, whatever other issues were going on in Pueblo. We identified um, a real need for a, a, a senior complex here. We had, no, we had the Senior Resource Development Agency, but it was in a blighted area of town, and it was, it was a fire trap. Uh, it was a dilapidated building, and there were really no f really full programs. And so, uh, Isaac Duran, who was a former city council person, he was the director at the time. And when we identified issues, one of the things that we wanted to do was to take on the half cent sales tax. I tell you all of this because um, that we uh, again we went before the cameras, we went to the, we were in front of the newspapers, and um, Isaac used to say, "If we lose, I lose my job." Of course, we lost. We were grassroots people taking on the, uh, the you know, uh, the Pueblo Economic Development Corporation, but we made a lot of noise, and we were um, uh, we were given a, the the distinction of being the new story of the year. Uh, so we, we 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 took on the powers, and um, I was organizing press conferences. 
I was uh, setting up meetings, uh, public meetings with legislators, and I was um, uh, involved with a higher level of fundraising, and I had my media contacts. So uh, what does that have to do with history? <laughs> I kept one foot in history by being a volunteer. Uh, I introduced myself to Joanne Dodds at the, uh, at the library who ran the Western Research Room, and I said, hey, I, you know, when I was a student, I said, I want to learn how to research. I want to get into the vaults, if you will, and she helped me with that. Um, I, um, this university didn't help me particularly as an individual, but. Um, but it didn't hurt either. And, you know, I, I got my degree, and this is a good school, uh, and it's gotten better. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I kept one foot in, you know, I went to the museum, uh, El Pueblo Museum, which is small, uh, and I, I volunteered, and uh, I, I got some experience that way. So all of these experiences came together to help me become, um, you know, uh, a, a, to get in, into my career into my career and everything I, I learned as a, a community organizer, as that person on the picket line, learning to be analytical, learning to read between the lines and, and uh, question. You know, no more just take it as face value. No more this is the way it is. This is the way it's going to change. This is what we're going to do to make a change. And I took that with me into the, the work that I did as a historian. And I became the director of El uh, uh, Pueblo Museum, and, and that later became El Pueblo History Museum. And I was an employee of History Colorado for 28 years. So um, that's uh, uh, how I experienced the movement in La Cucaracha. Um, but I can I can also share that uh, it. We became a family, uh, and a, a, a really um, strong family, having experienced all of that. So, um, even though I wasn't in the trenches of La Cucaracha, um, uh, I'm very proud uh, to have been associated and, and uh, been one of the, the founders among the three of us, and Swan, myself, I mean, to talk about this is what needs to be done and this is where we're going to go. And I realize now, too, that because my family was here, uh, I, be, um, I was, I, I, it's like, I was the link to Pueblo. I had the family. I knew Pueblo. I used to come here as a child. My grandparents moved here. Um, and um, so things happened for a reason. <laughs> You were, you were our anchor baby. I was an anchor. I was the anchor baby, having anchor babies left and right. <laughs> Four daughters. So I didn't mention uh, <coughs> uh, my daughter Nava and my daughter um, Estrella, all born and raised in Pueblo, Colorado. Through the progression of the Cucaracha, how were your experiences and obstacles different being a woman as compared to the men in the Cucaracha? It was different. Uh, it was different. Um, uh, <clears throat> I there was some frustration expressed. The, the leadership really went to the men. It really went to the men, and uh, uh, the the there were some editorial discussions, I suppose, that I did not take a part in. Again, I've already explained all of that. But at the same time. Uh, I, I remember wanting to have, it, wanting more of a role in the land rights issue when they did a movie called La Guerra. To me, that was so cultural and historical. I wanted some part of that, and thought, well, you know, and I, I do remember saying, well, I, I could do that. I think I could do that. It never happened, and uh, so uh, I, I, I love, I love them all. <laughs> and uh, uh, but it wasn't always. The and, um, uh, but I had my own path. Uh, I, I do know that some of the other women have expressed some frustrations. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.